Welcome to MMA May, the best MMA show around the world. Mighty Devin Debo Taylor. What's up, bud? How you doing this week? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm yes, good. he's good. not. <laughs> Hashtag new champ. New champ, baby. Oh, God, that was awesome. You know what? I feel just like Shogun, okay? Because I should have won that fight. Yeah. It should have been called. And there was it was illegal blows to the back of the head. And <sighs> that belt does not belong around your waist. It belongs. Okay? We, we're going to put it on the waist. We're going to put it right. No, actually, it was on my right shoulder for so long. We're going to put it on my left shoulder for a while, right? Can you feel the hate? That I'm sending your way right now. I can love you, it. Can you like Bring it over. And You're just like, what's that? What? what how, how's that? Fueled by haters, driven by passion. You got a lot of fuel right now. A lot of fuel. Bring it on. A lot of fuel. Of course, push some containers towards you. Just fill them up. Full of that haterade. You know, I put a I put up a tweet and it feels so valid. MMA karma. It's just <laughs> that's what it, it is. It's a baby. background. I know you loved Condit. And you know he got injured, he lost, and I know you were really down. And uh, hey, look at this week. Now. <laughs> this took, week, <laughs> it only took a week for it to come back around. <laughs> and uh, you know what I love about this scenario, though, the whole scenario is that there's not a lot of fights coming up for the next few weeks, so I'll probably retain the belt for the next few weeks by default. I love that. Why don't you tell the evil genius plan that you had as well? When I said, I've been doing research and I really like, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, you know, figure out some good Bellator picks. Cause there's Bellator every week. Yeah, so I, is. I was thinking, okay, I can get my belt back. And, and I'm like, you know what, Devin? I really agree with you on that pick. So that way <laughs> we both lose or we both win. And then I get to retain it by default. You gotta love my strategy, though. You gotta it, love it's, it. It's evil genius. Evil I will, genius. I will right give here. you Come that. On. You know, <laughs> our, our friend Fong would really appreciate the evil genius in that. <laughs> oh, so, anyways, we had UFC Fight Night in Brazil, and that's what we were speaking of. Shogun Hua against Dan Henderson, Hendo, H Bomb. You know what, though? We'll talk about that fight in a minute. We don't even have to if you don't want to. Yeah, we don't, no, you know, we don't I'll, well, I, you know, I'll think about it as we go along. We'll see how, how it plays out. We don't even have to bring that back up. Dude, that car was a banger. And to be on free on Fox Sports 1, that was a banger, dude. There were some good fights on there. And what I think... Just let me... I just have, to, wanna, I, have to work, I have to work through it a little bit. My therapist said, <laughs> you know, I should just try and work through it slowly. Deal with the emotions as they come. Uh, yeah, a lot of um, some amazing highlight reel finishes. Uh, a lot of finishes in that in that card. If you haven't seen it, watch you it. You don't have to download it because it's all free, right? Probably yeah, so I don't. I guess you would. I guess you would download, download it still. It, but, but, yeah. but I have to say, a lot of underdogs won, dude. I mean, besides Hendo being the underdog, but I mean, you had like uh, DB Soloway. I mean, uh, CB. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was on a. On some slizzer on Sunday, you really him, were. Called him DB. You were like DB's real. I said, "Who? What are you talking about?" Uh, Moraga, he was underdog. He wins. Um, the big one, uh, uh, juicier, Ju juicy. Yeah, I don't know how to say the name, but I yeah, think it's like Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Z or something. Uh, but there was some lights on. We just call him Silva. Silva. Lil Silva, maybe Lil, Lil Silva. Silva. Lil Silva. Because there's Lil Silva, there's regular Silva, and then there's Bigfoot Silva. Like right. there's. Yeah, the big, the big, not him, but the foot. There's like the little, like the one that's too small, and then the one that's too big, and then the one that's just right. <laughs> the video one. It's kind of like the three bears. Yeah. That's nice. What I, was with the I think small, um, the most impressive knockout, honestly, was Pepe's. The he double, got, the double he got, knee. He got 50000 for Woo! it. Woo! Woo! 50000 for the double knee. That's worth double it. Double knee. That was, that was a banger right there. Um, and we were in the middle of, I was saying that he wasn't doing very good. He was going to lose. <laughs> yeah. And then he ran over and hit him with the flying knee. Flying and knee to the jaw. I mean, it was just placed perfect. That was actually tough to watch. And I thought he, he was dead. He looked he looked like he just literally went to sleep. Yeah. He was like posted up against the cage. Looked like he was taking a nice little nap. It but then bad. the problem was then he Pepe kind of comes back over and he's like, hey, you doing all right? And he <laughs> he had this like, he had this like, yo, I'm real tired right now. And that's the I sad thing is his eyes were still open and he was like that. It, and that's why it literally like not to be 
jokingly, it, it looked like he was dead. Like yeah, it looked bad. It looked really it's not, bad. It's not like he was knocked out. Like some people, when they get knocked out, their eyes roll in the back of their head, or they're like real bright eyed, or they still. This dude was just limp. His eyes were like half open. I mean, it, it literally looked like he was dead. I was, I was yeah, actually I would, scared. I would assume he was concussed pretty bad. Oh yeah, I mean, for sure. I think there's a difference between like a knockout and concussion. I mean, this was like a bad concussion. Yeah, because some he people was, get some people get knocked out. out and then like they wake right back up and they're like, "What happened?" But no, this this dude wasn't having that. Yeah, he oof, it wasn't pretty. I mean, you could have pretty much just gave him a blanket, maybe a little pillow. And, and That's he, what I'm he saying. He looked, like, he looked like he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna just, <laughs> just get a little catch a little Z's real quick." But I, I hope I hope he's not hurt. You know. Severely, you know. Right now in my head, I'm doing that to you. Like yeah. I'm, I'm cutting me, hit you with the flying <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you take a little nap, and we you don't even notice it. You just nap right there, and we just keep on with the rest of the show. Put some sunglasses on. You be like, we can a birdie. We can a birdie. Yeah, exactly. You a little string, and you can move me yeah. around like a puppet. Don't you think I'm right? And you're like, that's how I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh man, but um, CB Dalloway, dude, that knockout, it was it was crazy because he's like up against the fence, and this was the ma a co-main event. And um, dude's just throwing makers on him, man. And he's just like kind of like Matrix almost. Like he got caught a little bit, but you could see him like he's waiting, he's waiting. And then it's like right just comes in and blammo. Lights time, him up. time for the hater in me. Uh oh, uh, here we go. I'm going to Debo's hater corner. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm going to do right here. Um, uh, Muchan Mutanchi, Mut Mutachi, uh, the other dude, real big dude. <laughs> Watching that, and especially as they show the replays, he just is way off balance. Like you said, he's throwing haymakers, but they're really ugly. His his feet real ugly. His technique is really bad. <laughs> you could say CB was doing the Matrix thing, but he kind of was just standing there watching these blows, <laughs> and they're literally all hitting him in the show. This guy's just swinging like a knucklehead, just missing, and uh you know, he misses, and then he's way off balance. CB connects, puts him away. So, I'll give CB, like, 10% credit. 10%? That's and it? And I'm going to put 90% on Knucklehead, on Mutanchi, because wow. it uh, anybody gets knocked out. You know, you, you're just, he's way off base. It just was really sloppy. I think let me really ask you, to, is some of this um, evaluation and, you know, analogy coming from that don't, don't, hatred of Shogun oh, getting knocked out? Because that's what I feel is kind of being derived from. You know, got that hate. You're just like, you know what? I'm going to disagree with Mighty just because his boy beat my boy up. I am what I like to call a gracious loser. So, you know what? Shogun lost. I've accepted it, baby. I got... I got that Daniel Strauss in me, okay? I know don't, how to, know how to be a good love. Don't ever say that again. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you check our Twitter and look at the picture, there was no grace in that loss with you. The, dude, what is, I'm here. I showed up. I didn't want to show up. Okay, I thought about, you know what? I'm not going to the studio. I, I don't hate that fool. I hate him so much. But I said, you know what? I got to be a gracious loser. Let me show up and do it. No, objectively, I really think you know, hats off to C.B. Dalloway. He didn't, like, fall asleep or something. But <laughs> he, I didn't see too much there that he did in an amazing way. We'll see. He was on a kind of a fight streak, I think. Uh, he was on a slump. I'm just saying <laughs> it, I, I'm not going to crown him a contender all of a sudden. And the thing is, like, honestly, I don't even like C.B. Dalloway. Like, not that it gets him personally. It's just there's something about him that just kind of irritates me for some reason. I, I don't know what it is, but ever since the Ultimate yeah, Fighter. Yeah, his performance on the Ultimate Fighter or <laughs> yeah. his, his house performance on the but, Ultimate Fighter. But that Peruvian, like jerk. that Peruvian that necktie, necktie submission he got on the couple fights about, uh, what was it about? He's got a couple couple of them. He's got a couple of neckties. Yeah? In the UFC, though? I think he's, it was I only say one. he has two. Okay. Okay. I know he's got one maybe, for sure. I know he has at least one. Yeah, I know you got that one for sure. I thought maybe that was the only one, but I, I could be mistaken. He's a big I don't fan. know everything. He's a big fan of those neckties. I, I know about 99% of everything, and Devin has that 1% that I don't know. That could be that 1%. I'm at, I'm at top 1%. <laughs> he's at that bottom 99. Whatever. I take all that 99, baby. And the, But the top 1% is more. But, but you only know 1% on the top. But it's the good 1%. You just, <laughs> you just know a bunch of dumb 99. I got the good but 1%. But you know what? My 99% took the right winner. On this past weekend's main uh, event, so there you go. Boom! How do you like that one per se? Uh, you know what? I'm working on being gracious. <laughs> and in my head, you're getting that Pepe flying knee, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not going to just, you know, outside. Oh, like, no, 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 no. I've got it. I've got it. I don't like this. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. 
We're gonna have our boy Jim at Living Fat make one of those custom walkout shirts that you wanted so bad that Shogun had. And on the back, you could put the one percenter, and it'd be like your customized jersey slash who will walkout shirt. How, how, how's that sound? I think that sounds pretty good. I thought we weren't talking about that fight. What happened? <laughs> no, I said I would think about it and see how it feels, and it feels pretty good right now. I'm not gonna can lie. You, can you edit out my tears <laughs> funny right now? Because I'm gonna put some big tear drops coming down, like straight Powerpuff Girl style. Like, <laughs> see, I think here's the thing for you. Please you know, me. Condit. I think. Why you gotta keep bringing up Condit? Really? Because he lost too. Because <laughs> I gotta get back at you with some. You know, uh, you really. And that was a part of the reason why you got into the fight game. I think a little bit. Condit? For me, yeah. Shogun, man, back pride days. He just, he couldn't be stopped. He was a monster, a young guy. I, I loved him, man. And it's, you know, I, I told one of my buddies, it's like watching your childhood hero die. Yeah. Just watching his nose just immediately just shatter. <laughs> he, not only does he get knocked out, but he does like the knockout roll and then he's rolling backwards. And then he's getting beat in the back of the head. It was... You know what's interesting about that matchup is... It was tough to watch. Prior to 2011, when they first met, and they fought in Pride together for all these years, they never met each other. That's... Yeah, that's well, kinda... for a while, Hendo was actually up a weight class. Yeah, and then true. And was dropping down, and uh, yeah, it never really happened. It was one that I think everybody wanted to see. There was a couple of uh, Pride fights that people had wanted to see, and... Yeah. Uh, that's one of them. I mean, I'm happy with it. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but... I definitely liked it better than the first one. I thought the second one was much better. It was more definitive, if you would. See, I put that right hand up. The I should have got it. I should have got a sharpie and put an H right here tonight for that. Or no, I, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay gracious and not sucker punch you right now. Because that's what I want to do. I want to sucker. Punch. Okay, let's move on now. Thank you. As I stated earlier, there is. Oh, oh. Uh, we'll, hold on, we forgot one thing. No, no, oh. seriously, we forgot Bellator. Okay. Bellator was this past Friday. We can't forget about Bellator. They're every Friday night, I think, all the way until about November is when the season ends. I was and right. We were both right. Well, I picked Manuel Noon, and then you really? decided really? to also pick that him. I mean, if you want to take that, I'll let you, I'll let you take that. If Thanks. that's going to make you something, give me a little feel better. Give me something. Actually, what I want to talk about is Rickles. Um, he was fighting Pitbull. Wow. Oh, my God. Talk about... Just a rookie move on Herzog's part. So Rickles was fighting Pitbull for part of the tourney bracket. Um, I forget Herzog's first name, but he's a known ref. I mean, he's he's ref for the UFC yeah. before in different states. Um, and basically, Pitbull lights up Rickles. He falls down. He's on the mat just like in La La Land, and Herzog's down there. And Pitbull's like, really? Do you want me to do this? He's like... I mean, the dude was already out, man. The funny part is how close the ref... I mean, because the ref's He's in the right position to there. stop it. Yeah. So he lights him up. Rickles is gone. He's, you know, he's out. But he's kind of just looking up. <laughs> and the ref really, like, bends over, looks down at him, <laughs> yeah. and is like, doesn't really stop it. Yeah. Just, like, looks... And it kind of looks at him like, I think he's about to hit you, boss. <laughs> and then Pitbull's like, all right, then. <laughs> and just, it's straight... It's a, and he catches him. Oh, dude. And, and when you're laying on the mat like that, your head can't move... It's just nothing but pure impact to the dome, bro. It was bad. It was But bad. then we had the other side of that over in Brazil. You've got the Dennis Seiler fight. Is it, and no, Steven. Steven. Steven Seiler. And uh, he gets cracked. and But he, you know, it's one of those where you get kind of dropped. Yeah, he gets But stumbled. you've recovered. You know, you get hit. You, you know, your knees buckle, but then you're back in it. The ref, I think maybe a rookie ref or something kind of new. It was he the stops local Brazilian it. ref. He runs over, stops it, and Siler's like looking at him like, why are you stopping the fight? Yeah. I'm, look, I'm, re I'm good. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because Tough to, that you know, same ref was refing the Norman Park fight. And it was the same thing. Okay, yes, he grabbed the shorts, right? But almost every single time I've ever seen something happen where it's a foul, you get a warning. They pull you aside at least and be like, look, you do this again, I'm going to dock you a point. No. I'm not trying to be racist here, but I will be. Brazilian fighter against a, he wasn't American, but a non-Brazilian fighter. True. He is from North, North Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, North Ireland. And they immediately, one point, one point. So it ends up being a draw. I mean, it wasn't a great fight to begin with, but Norman Park deserved the victory. He was the better performer. Not that either performance was great. And then the same thing with... The Siler fight, it was a 
a Brazilian fighter against a non-Brazilian fighter, and it was the same ref and the same, you know, a similar situation happens. It was BS, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, hard to argue. I mean, pretty obvious. The the short grab was pretty egregious. It was. it was bad. You do typically get a warning, but that is something that's kind of on the ref's decision in terms of, you know, we also had uh, the other side where, um, I'm sorry, which fighter is grabbing the fence oh, over, yeah, and over, over and over and over and over again. Yamasaki. And Mario Yamasaki gives him a million warnings and keeps giving, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a point. He does it again. Hey, hey. I'm gonna take a point. Does it again? Hey, did, now do you remember? I said I would take a point. So it's like two different extremes, right? You exactly. got too lenient and way too. But Mario Yamasaki is also Brazilian. He is. So you know, I mean, there was sometimes you just say it's bad refing, and it goes wherever it goes. Yeah, I, I honestly, if I never see that guy ref another fight again, I would we'd be happy. Probably a good thing. Yes. The last fight on this card, I we real quick. My boy that made up for the painful night that I had. You didn't make up for, but go ahead. Fabio Maldonado. Ooh. Oh my gosh! How I much fun? All these fights. How much fun was that fight to watch, dude? I mean, this guy just gets lit up in the first round. He looks bad. <laughs> he's just on the ground. And he's like like the turtle that can't get up. He has no no jujitsu game. Doesn't know how to get back to his feet. Second and third round, he decides, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's have a let's just have a fun yeah, fight. But props to uh, Viol Violante, I think that's how you pronounce his name. John, it's G I A. A kid, bro. He takes, I mean, Maldonado. He takes some shit. He throws shots. some meat hooks, bro. Undefeated professional boxer or amateur professional boxing, and uh, he's got great hands. Oh, and he dude. lights up uh, John and doesn't go down. What were they saying? Second most accurate striker in the UFC or something like that? Only to Anderson Silver? Only like Anderson. That? So he's number one in his weight class, but second in the UFC That's total. That's crazy. I mean, he's, I mean, he's a legit boxer. Great. And you saw him landing almost everything yeah. in this fight. Uh, that was just, I mean, a great fight to watch. The whole card. If we haven't said enough about it, it was a phenomenal watch card. this card front to back, beginning to end. Don't watch the Shogun fight. <laughs> end it well, like end it after the second round, and then it's a great fight. Yeah. Don't so, watch the turn. If you haven't figured it out, Shogun lost, <laughs> and uh, we're not going to talk we're about that. It's else. actually getting close to the end of the show. I know we're getting cut for time here, and but I do want to talk about a couple things. Uh, first of all. Weidman out, knee injury. Uh, that fight gets moved back from once UFC 173 to UFC 175. It's still going to be against Machida. Um, it get pushed back from Memorial Day weekend to Fourth of July weekend. Uh, that's a hard thing to try to swallow because that fight card on Memorial Day weekend is already screwed up. They had Chael against uh, Mandalay originally, and that got scrapped because of contractual things and something to do with the show. And then now this is scrap, so they have no main event. So that sucks. Which is normally a really big one for them. Yeah, I mean, that's that their Memorial, second biggest. That Memorial Day fight is a big one, so we'll see what they can do. They've got a lot of fighters on roster. The question is, how many big names do they have that they can try and move around? Exactly. Who will step up? This is when Dana decides who gets that big contract extension, who's willing to step up. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is there's not a lot of UFC fights coming up until the, I think the next fight's Abu Dhabi, April 11th. So... The title is on one fight if you want to go for it, or you can just let it ride for me. But Bellator next week, um, Ward against uh, Shilomenko, is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah. Um, I'll let you have whoever you want to pick first. Go ahead. No, no, first. no, no. Go no, ahead. No, 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 I'll no. let you pick. No, you're the champ. No. I'll, I'll, I'll go with Shilomenko. All right. Yeah. I, and I will take the upset. Might as well. You have no other I, I have no choice. <laughs> I have no choice because I knew he would be dirty. And he's a uh, huge underdog, but I don't whatever, care. Whatever, whatever, right? Because Hendo is an underdog and you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's it for tonight. Give me my really, belt. Let's go, baby. We really appreciate everyone watching. Thank you so much. It went so quick tonight. Uh, Devin Debo Taylor, the champion. I'll, mighty. I'll never say it. I'll never mighty. say it. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. Talk to you later.